Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be showing you how I created this barbecue themed card, perfect for your guy, whether it's for Father's Day or some other occasion. First I'll start out showing you the template I used to create the apron. I didn't have a stamp or a die that was specifically apron shaped, so I decided to create my own since an apron is a pretty basic shape. I started out with the largest rectangle die from my favorite things die set, and I'll be using the largest circle from another my favorite things die set to cut out the uh, well, not the arms, but the little angled parts at the side, which I think will make more sense as you see me do it. So I placed the large circle after doubling over the paper, and I did use copy tape paper at first just to test out the template and see if I thought it would work. And then I actually recreated the process using white cardstock because what I use this for is actually to trace around rather than using that piece specifically in the card. So at this point I'm using the template I created to trace the apron or basic shape of the apron onto some Nina Solar White cardstock and I will be coloring all over it with one single color. Um, I'm showing two different colors that could work. A Copic B29 or Spectrum Noir TB5 would work because they're pretty much the same color and as you can see I'm just scribbling it all over using the chisel into the marker and just covering over where I drew the template. Next I'm going to be using the colorless blender and I am using the chisel side again and I'm not using it so much to blend the marker as I am to try to force some of that color through the paper and give it a more textured kind of look more like blue jean material and I'll also do that again here on the side to create a strip because I need some apron strings so to speak so I'm repeating the process of laying down the blue color then going back over it with the colorless blender and so now that I'm finished with that part of it I just trim out the apron piece just following the pencil lines even though they're not visible on camera it is pretty easy to see if you're recreating them the same way I'm doing it. And then I roughly trim down that extra blue piece on the side, which I'll trim down further to create the apron strings. Now what you see me doing here is using a piece of terry cloth towel, a little remnant of it, and I put some Copic blending solution on it. Now it's possible that straight alcohol may do the trick. Um, I just happen to have this on hand and I'm using it to blot up more of the color and add more texture. So I'm just kind of tapping it down, then wiping it back and forth just to get that extra texture. And I do the same thing with those two extra strips, which I need to trim down a little bit later. And next I pull out one of the two waffle flower stamp sets that I will be using on the card. The first stamp I'm going to show you is from the Barbecue Saying set. It's a cute little star with a banner that says barbecue star, and I thought it was going to be perfect for my little apron. The, at first, I stamped that in Simon Says Intense Black Ink. Then I realized there were some other stamps I really meant to put down and stamp at the same time, so I pulled out the Meet Up set, set and pulled out the tongs, the meat fork, and a spatula. From that set and stamped them with the same intense black ink. I had to stamp a couple of times because there were a few spots that I missed and I switched around because I felt like I had gotten too much ink on it the first time around and I tried it again and it looked better the second time I stamped it. And in between I attempted to start coloring the barbecue star and the ink for some reason was just smearing on me so I don't know if it's because it just wasn't dry yet but I ended up changing over to black memento ink which is what I would typically use for Copic coloring so I went back to that and I decided to go ahead and leave that stamp inside the Misty because I wanted to go back later and possibly emboss that after doing my Copic coloring so that's another great reason to have a Misty in case you want to go back and do something like that because it 
is not considered safe for Copic markers to emboss and then try to color over them. I haven't, I can't say I've really noticed any issues from the couple of times I've just gone ahead and done something like that after the fact anyway. And I'm moving on to my Copic coloring. I'm just putting down some basic colors at this time using a bright uh, yellow, a bright red, and those are pretty much the only two colors I used on the banner other than when I went back with some darker reds and yellow to give more depth to the star. And as I finish up all the coloring, I wanted to show you the difference between the first side I stamped and attempted to color versus when I flip it over and show you when I redid it. And I think it was much better when I redid it with the black memento ink and then colored it. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to re-stamp over that and I'm going to be using clear Versamark ink so that I can just use some clear embossing powder over the star. And that way, even if it happens to not be exactly perfectly lined up, which it really should be, then the clear embossing powder really is not going to call any attention to that at all. It's just going to emphasize the color that's already underneath it. And while I don't always show the heat embossing part, I wanted to say that I just recently purchased this Hero Arts Wagner heat tool. I'd been using another brand for a while and decided I was finally going to take the plunge and try this one. And so far I really liked it. I think it does actually cause less warping as long as you do heat up the tool good and well before you use it. Well, now moving on to uh, creating the straps or cutting down the existing pieces of paper that will form the straps. And what I did is I set this up with a piece of purple tape to hold down that strip so that I could get the most even result from cutting such a tiny thing. And I couldn't really accomplish this with a guillotine style trimmer. So I'm going to do the same thing with the second strip. I'm going to end up with one set that's a little bit thinner than the other, so I'm going to use the thinner one for the top straps and the thicker ones for the ones at the side. And now that I've trimmed out the pieces, I'm not going to adhere them immediately. Instead, I'm going to add some accents to the apron. I'm creating some stitching lines around the entire edge of the apron, and I'll repeat that process for the two straps as well, just to add extra detail. You can't really see all of that in the 
video, but if you look at the close-up images here at the end of the video or visit the blog post associated with this, you'll see what I'm talking about for that detail. So as you can see, I've taken some additional stamps and I stamped them all around the piece of black cardstock that's going to be my base underneath the apron. I decided to just use some Versamark and clear ink so that it adds something to the background without competing for attention. And as you can see, I've turned the apron face down and I'm gluing on the straps. And if you're wondering why the heck I'm leaving them so long, in a minute it will they will get trimmed down and it will make sense why I've left them so long. I was trying to leave myself room for not error, but I didn't want to cut them off and then decide the placement I wanted on the apron was going to be different. As you can see, I added some foam tape because I decided I wanted to pop that up against the background. And this is a point where I decided instead of just cutting the apron strings off at the edges, I decided to cut them just long enough so I could wrap them around the black card panel. And I'm just gluing down those straps with some Nuvo liquid glue. And by the way, I am loving this glue. I, I've been using Tombow for a long time, but I've discovered this glue is, is almost a better fit for me. In any case, I am gluing down the tongs and the spatula and... I wanted the meat fork that's going to be up at the top to be popped up and I decided this would be the perfect opportunity to try something that's new to me. These Darice uh, thin foam strips are just the perfect thing. They weren't too thick to go with this fork, this meat fork, which is actually pretty thin as far as die cuts go. And I kept fiddling with it, trying to put the tape on the back of it in the air, and then finally just decided it was easier to set it down first and then put the tape on the back of the die cut. So silly me, why didn't I figure this out sooner? So I snip off the end of that, and I end up using that little piece later. And I'm sorry that is off screen up there at the top, but I find that little piece I chopped off earlier, and I stick it underneath the end of that spatula so it doesn't it's kind of at the same level so to speak as the apron is and the last step before I put this all together is I took a yellow spectrum noir marker that's pretty glittery glimmery looking and I added that over the yellow part only on the banner so that it would give it just a little bit of sparkle and shine I mean it's nothing crazy but it does add a little bit of something to the finished card. And I'm really liking this combo of the bright colors popped against that black background with just the subtlety of the clear embossed images on the black cardstock. I glued down my panel to a wide A2 card base, and that is my card for today. I appreciate you watching, and hope you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already.